Trade and commerce is the lifeline of any nation. In an era of competitive economics, the goods are traded by their names which may indicate their quality and distinct the products from others. The law of trademark in India before 1940 was based on the common law principle of passing off and equity as follower in England before the intactment of the first registration act 1875. The first statutory law related to trademark in India was the Trademark Act 1940 which had similar provision like the UK Trademark Act 1938. In 1958, the Trade and Merchandise Mark Act 1958 was enacted which considered the provision related to trademark contained in other statutes like the Indian Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Code and the Sea Custom Act. The Trade and Merchandise Mark Act 1958 was repeated by the Trademark Act 1999 and is current governing law related to registered trademarks. The 1999 Act was enacted to comply with the provisions of the TRIPS through some aspect of unregistered trademark have been enacted into the 1999 Act, but they are primarily governed by the common law rules based on the principles evolved out of the judgment of the court. Where the law is ambiguous, the principles evolved and interpretation made by the court in England have been applied in India taking into consideration the context of legal procedure, laws and realities of India. The importance of trademark was recognized at global level through Madrid Agreement in 1890s. In India, the trademark has evolved majorly with the intactment of trade and merchandise marks. Act 1999. Before the intactment of Trademark Act, trademarks used to be called as common law marks but could not be registered as they were no statutory law. The owner of the mark had to seek common law remedy to act against the infringement of his marks. After independence, to meet with these requirements, the Trademark and Merchandise Act was passed in 1999 which came into force with effect from September 15, 2003. According to Section 2 ZB of the Trademark Act 1999, trademark means a mark capable of being represented graphically and is capable of distinguishing the good of services of one person from those of other and may include shape of good, their packaging and combination of colors. A mark can include a device, brand, heading, label, ticket, name, signature, word, letter and numeral, shape of goods, packaging or combinations of color or any such combinations. The objective of trademark law is to provide legal protection of goods and services and prevent fraudulent use of marks. The unique feature of trademarks from other categories of IPRs, example, copyright, patent act, is that the legal protection over trademark is given for an indefinite term provided other legal condition which as renewal are fulfilled. Feature of the Trademarks and Merchandise Marks Act 1999 During the early 90s, there was a need to provide comprehensive reviews of the existing law to be made in view of development in trading and commercial practices, increasing globalization of trade and industry. The need to encourage investment flows and transfer of technology, need for simplification and harmonization of trademarks management system to give effect to important judicial decision. To achieve this purpose, the Act proposes the incorporate in accordance in the following features. A. Providing for registration of trademark for services in addition to goods. The novel feature was introduced by the Act of 1999. B. Registration of trademarks which are the imitation of well-known trademarks not to be permitted beside enlarging the grounds or refusal of registration. Consequently, the provision for defensive registration of trademarks have been proposed to be omitted. C. Amplification of factor to be considered for defining a well-known trademark. D. Establishing a system of trademark registration with different legal right to provide a single registration with simplified procedure and with equal right. E. Simplifying the procedure for registration of registered 
user and enlarging the scope of permitted use. F. Establishment of appellate board for speedy disposal of appeals and rectification of applicants which under the Act of 1958 were entrusted to the High Court. G. Providing registration of collective marks owned by the association etc. H. The final authority relating to the registration of trademark certification to be provided by the registrar and not the central government. I. Enhanced provision of punishment for the offences related to the trademark on par with the present Copyright Act 1957 to prevent the sale of spurious good. J. Bearing the use of someone else's trademark as a part of their business name of corporate concerns. K. Extension of application of convention country to include countries which are members of group of union of countries and intergovernmental organizations. L. Increasing the period of registration and renewal from 7 year to 10 years. M. Single registration in more than one class. N. Making trademark offenses punishable. Person from those of other and may include shape of goods, their packaging and combination of color. This ensures the distinctiveness of the trademark. Characteristic of a trademark. The certain essential characteristic of trademark may be highlighted as under. First, the definition of trademark and mark included within itself trade name under which articles goods are sold. Second, trademark is a kind of property and is entitled to protection under law. Third, a trademark is generally transmitted in connection with the goodwill of the business. Therefore, law does not recognize transfer separate from the goodwill of the business. 4. A trademark may be registered or unregistered. Registration of the trademark ensure ownership of the business and ensure protection against any infringement of the mark. 5th. Trademark has many categories such as services marks, certification marks, collective marks and trademark themselves. 6. Distinctness the major quality of any trademark. This ensures that the goods and services are marked as distinct from these of other products or such goods. Function of a trademark The function of a trademark is to give an indication to the possible purchaser as to the manufacture or the quality of the goods. It gives the purchaser a satisfactory assurance of the quality of the marks or the services offered. It is a representation of the goodwill of the product. The function of the trademark can be further classified as First, identification of the product and origin. Second, guarantee the establishment quality. Third, a channel of advertisement of the product. Fourth, image formation in the mind of public. Various form of the trademark. A trademark may be visualized in many forms, include words, letters, numerals, name and so on. Here under are some various well-known trademark found in different forms. First, brand. It usually refers to the kind of marks which are being branded on goods themselves constituting the trademark. Second, letters. The letter formation play a very vital role in development of a popular trademark. Third, label and ticket. These contain various features including devices, words or patches attached to the goods themselves. Fourth, numerals, a combination of numerals that can also be used as a trademark. Fifth, symbol and logos, a visual depiction of the, to the manufacturer or the company and lives in the identity to it. Generally, logos are used as services mark. Sixth, container, it is a three-dimension form which may be treated as trademark. Seventh, shape of good, a unique shape of good may be considered as a trademark. Packaging. A packaging is also eligible or trademark protection. Ninth, devices. A mark which may not fall under any of the categories may fall under this. Tenth, title. A title of book or magazine or a periodical is also classified to be a valid trademark. Term of the trademark. Initially, the trademark is issued for a period of 10 years, but it can be perpetually renewed for indefinite period unless it is removed from registered and prohibited by court order.
distinction between a trademark and a property mark. The distinction between a trademark and a property mark is that the former denotes the manufacture or quality of the goods to which it is attached and the latter denotes the ownership of them. To be briefer, the former concern the goods themselves whereas the latter contain the property of them. A property mark as defined by section 479 of the Indian Penal Code means a mark used to represent the movable property belonging to a particular person. There are other specific forms of marks which cover certain categories of trade, business or services. The trademark law also provides the protection to them. Few of them are detailed here under. First, service marks. Service means service of any description which is made available to potential user and includes the provision of service in connection with the business of any industrial or commercial matter such as banking, communication, etc. or the other energy boarding, etc. Conveying of new or information and adverting. The service marks protection can be claimed in relation to service which are connected with the business of an industrial or commercial nature and not of philanthropic nature. Second, collective mark. Certification trademark means a trademark distinguishing the goods or service in connection with which it is used in the course of trade which are certified by the proprietor of the mark in respect to the origin, material, mode of manufacture of goods quality, service, etc. are registrable. It may not be the registrable in the name of a person but as a provision of kind of service certified. Third, well-known trademark. In relation to any good or service, a mark which has become so to the substantial segment of the public which uses such goods or receives such services. Fourth, internet domain names. With the advancement of the progress in technology, the service provided on the internet websites have also come to the recognized and accepted and are being given protection so as to protect such provider of services. Unauthorized use of trademark which may be deceptively similar or identical to the original trademark would amount to infringement. A trademark is infringed by a person who not being a registered user uses an identical or deceptively similar mark in relation to the same goods or services in respect of which the trademark is registered. In order to constitute infringement, the following requirement must be fulfilled. First, the person is not authorized to use the trademark. Second, the infringement trademark is either similar or identical to the already registered trademark. Third, the infringing trademark must be used in the course of regular trade in which the registered user is already engaged. Fourth, the use of infringing trade mark must be printed or in case of usual representation of mark in advertisement, invoice or bill. Mere oral use of the trademark is not infringement. Fifth, use of either whole registered mark or an adopted one by the making of few addition and alterations. Legal remedies against infringement. Once the nature and form of infringement is considered, the Trademark Act 1999 provides civil and criminal remedies which are not only confirmed to mere infringement but also to facilitation of trademark and breach of other statutory obligation that cast upon the trademark user. First, civil remedies. The lawsuit for infringement can be filled by the registered user or his legal successor. Even joint parties of any foreign user of a registered Indian trademark are also eligible for filing a law suit against infringement. The law suit will take place of non-registered trademark once registration of the mark is granted. The law suit can be filed against a person who directly infringe or passes of the trademark directly or act an agent to the infringer. The master in whose employment and under whose authority the servant committee the infringement the lawsuit can be instituted in the district court having jurisdiction to try this suit irrespective of whether the mark is registered or unregistered second criminal remedies 
in the trademark act 1999 provision have been made for punishment of various offenses which may be committed any person with regard to the felicitation of trademark the nature of offense and punishment can be briefly presented as under nature of offense punishment first falsifying and falsely applying trademarks minimum imprisonment for 6 month to a maximum of 3 years and fine ranging between 50000 to rupees 2 lakhs second selling good or providing services to which false trademark or false trademark description is applied minimum imprisonment for 6 month to a maximum of 3 years and fine ranging between 50000 to rupees 2 lakhs third removal of pieces of goods from the trademark products for the feature of goods and fine up to rupees 1000 fourth falsely representing a trademark as registered imprisonment up to 3 years or fine or both fifth improper description of a place of business as connected with trademark office imprisonment up to 2 years or fine or both In pharmaceutical industry it is a general practice to name drugs either by its principal component or the ailment for which it is related to it the chemical name and the generic name cannot per be registered as trademark as they are refused under section 13 of the trademark act 1999 but the pharmaceutical industry has adopted a way out by coining word which contain a part of the chemical name the service the purpose of identifying the drug but the same have also given rise to trademark infringement cases filed by drug companies on the other ground that the product of its competitor which employs a part of the chemical name in its trade name is deceptively similar to its own trade name this made us to analyze trademarks disputes involving pharmaceutical brands our objective was to ascertain how impartial is the judiciary in adjudicating trading mark disputes involving pharmaceutical brands yet another objective was to understand the efficiency of the indian judicial system in adjudicating trading mark disputes first bacom groups pick versus srk pharmaceuticals 2004 ptc 391 amoxil limoxil appellants respondents the appellant was using the mark amoxil in india since 1990 this mark was registered in india in 1972 in class 5 in respect of pharmaceutical goods the respondent started using the mark limoxil in india from 1985 the respondent filed the applicant for registration of the mark in 1987 in india in the same class with respect to similar goods The appellant brought an action against the respondent stating that the mark is deceptively similar. The only difference between the two mark is in the prefix ly and the m. The rival marks are phonetically and deceptively similar and the goods are pharmaceutical goods under section 121 of the act. The intellectual property appellant board IPAB held that the respondent dishonestly adopted the mark by copying it from the appellant who had got the mark registered long ago hence the respondent cannot claim honest concurrent use by virtue of earlier use the appellant board delivered a judgment prohibiting the registration of the trademark limoxil second rainbixi laboratories limited versus anand prasad and four other 2004 ptc 438 the fourth win is appellant and ostwin is a respondent the appellant was the registered proprietor of the mark fortwin and had been using the mark since 1975 the respondent applied for registration of the mark ostwin both the marks related to pharmaceutical composition in respect of treatment of bones the appellant brought an action against the respondent stating that the mark is deceptively similar the ipab held that the prefixes are ford and ost while both the marks within the suffix win it was further held that the since the rival goods are also pharmaceutical goods it might lead to serious consequences due to deception or confusion in the mind of the public hence on the possibility of harm being caused to common person the appeal was allowed third hoichest atkinjestil 
Boss versus RT Minerals and ANR 2004 PTC 470 where Arslion is the appellant and Artilon is the respondent. The appellant was the registered property of the trademark Arilon. This mark was registered in class 5 with respect to pharmaceutical goods relating to preparation for killing weeds and destroying vermin. The respondent filed an applicant for registration of the mark Artilon in the same class with respect to pharmaceutical goods. The appellant opposed the application for registration of trade mark filled by the respondent on the ground that the registration of impugned mark would be contrary to the provision of section 9, 11, 12, 1 and 18 of the trade merchandise mark at 1958. The IPAB held that the rival goods were same and the only difference was the latter T. The appellant board further held that the possibility of confusion and deception is not ruled out and hence affirmed the order rejection, the application for the registration filed by the respondent. The IPAB further held that the benefit of use under section 54 is given only in case of rectification proceeding when use of an associated trademark is deemed to use a registered trademark against using rectification proceeding are initiated for non-use of the mark. Fourth, Pfizer Ireland Pharmaceuticals versus Intas Pharmaceuticals and another 2004 PTC 456 where Lipiter is a platinum and Lipicor is a defendant. In this case, the plaintiff had applied for registration of the mark Lipitor in class 5 relating to the pharmaceutical codes, a drug used for treatment of cardiovascular diseases, especially for reduction cholesterol. This mark has been used by the plaintiff since 1947 all over the globe but had not commenced marketing and selling its product Lipitor in India. The defendant adopted the mark Lipicor for a similar drug which was manufactured and marketed in India by the defendant since June 2000. Therefore, the plaintiff filed as a suite in court for a decrease of passing off and also for payment of damages etc. It is also prayed for grant for a temporary injection in the favor of the plaintiff and against the defendant. It is assumed that the defendant did not incur any expenses toward research of the aforesaid drug and therefore it is possible for the defendant to manufacture mark and sell the same at cheaper price than that of the plaintiff. It was further held by the court that it is always possible for the plaintiff to be in India in the future as its application for registration is still pending in India. Therefore, the court held that this it is a fit case where an injection as sought for is required to be granted. The court granted temporary injections in favor of the plaintiff and against the defendant, restraining the defendant, their directors, partners, distributors, stockists, retailer and all other acting on their behalf from manufacturing, marketing, selling, offering for sale, advertising, etc. The product under the trademark Lipicor or any other mark which could be said to be confusingly or deceptively similar to the trademark Lipitor of the plaintiff till the disposal of the suite. The provision and the case studies discussed on the topic of trademark and merchandise mark enlightens the role of intellectual properties in monopolizing our creative and commercial identities and how to encounter if they are breached. Dear student, this brings us to the end of the topic on trade and merchandise mark act and its provision. Keep studying and upgrading your knowledge about intellectual property right. I wish you all the best and happy learning. Thank you.